All right, I got something exciting for everyone today. With me is Ace's brand new laptop. This is the Predator Helios Neo 16S AI. I promise you I'm never going to refer to it as AI again. This is their thin and light gaming laptop, essentially their competitor to the Zephyrus G16 and the Blade 16. What really shocked us most about this laptop is how much you get for the price. At the time of filming, our unit is going for US$1,900. You get Intel's excellent Arrow Lake HX processor, a 5070 Ti, 32GB of memory and a stunning OLED display. This is by far the best price gaming laptop we've tested this year. Asus's Zephyrus G16, it costs $2,600 for a similar config, and Razer's Blade 16 costs even more. In fact, this is the cheapest 5070 Ti laptop we've seen. And getting a 5070 Ti, it's important, as you get 12 gb of VRAM. Lower tier GPUs, they only have 8, which is pretty limiting in 2025. Anyway, since I've added your time, here's the skinny. The Predator 16S comes with a much better CPU than other thin and light gaming laptops. Its GPU also performs very well. In fact, sometimes beating out the Zephyrus G16 with a 5080. The Predator is also very quiet in light use, it has upgradable memory, and as I said, its pricing is very good. The Predator's cons though are that it always feels warm to the touch, and when running performance tasks and games, it has loud fan noise. Plus it has a major bug causing poor battery life. With that said, let's get into the details. When compared to other thin and portable gaming laptops, the Predator 16S, it looks and feels less premium. I wouldn't say cheap, but it's not in the same class as the Zephyrus G16, the Blade 16 and the MacBook Pro 16. With the lid closed, you can clearly see the back extending out. That part in particular makes it look cheap as it seems to be using a plasticky material, which is different to the rest of the laptop, and it doesn't blend in. This also makes the Predator larger than its competitors, particularly its depth. It's also slightly thicker than the G16 and the Blade, but its width is similar. Weight-wise, it's heavier than the Zephyrus G16 and around the same as the Blade. But the Predator has a trick up its sleeve. Its charger is unusually small for a 230 watt one. It's significantly smaller and lighter than the Blade's 280 watt charger, that's the one that came with my RTX 5080 unit. Some lower powered Blade 16s, they do come with a smaller 200 watt charger though. Overall, for a high performance gaming laptop, the Predator 16S isn't the most compact, but it does well in terms of portability. Let's continue with the chassis. The lid, it picks up fingerprints like crazy. Just as bad as the blade. It does have a Predator logo that lights up on it, which you can configure. The lid hinges come with this annoying plastic packaging film over them that is just ridiculously hard to remove. Acer, please stop doing this. When you press down on the lid, you'll notice a bit of flex, which does happen on the blade, but not on the Zephyrus. The keyboard deck also has a little flex to it. More than both the Zephyrus and the blade, but I didn't find it noticeable when I was typing. On typing, I really like that this laptop has a curved front edge. That way, it doesn't cut into your wrist. When you turn on the Predator, there is this very loud and aggressive sound, but you can turn it off and change the background image in Asus Predator software. The lid opens with one hand to reveal a vibrant OLED display that is glossy. You won't want to use this laptop with a window behind you due to reflections. Its competitors though, they also have glossy OLED displays. The display colour gamut, as per usual for an OLED panel, is excellent. 100% sRGB and P3. Brightness is good at around 450 nits. Resolution is the standard 2560 by 1600 and the refresh rate is 240Hz. One big issue with this laptop is that it will not let you lower its refresh rate down to 60Hz or use a dynamic refresh rate. This has major consequences when it comes to battery life. We'll cover this later in the video. Rounding out the display, I couldn't detect any noticeable PWM flickering or a screen door effect. The display does support G-Sync and it has a MUX switch, which you can access from Asus Predator software. When on the automatic mode, you get access to advanced Optimus, so you won't need to restart your computer when switching between Optimus and Direct to dedicated GPU. The keyboard is good in quite a unique way. Firstly, it's very quiet to type on. However, the key presses don't feel as mushy as most quiet keyboards do. Normally you get this choice of a clicky keyboard that is satisfying to type on but is loud, or you get a mushy keyboard that is quiet. This one is just a good balance. The second part of the keyboard I really like is the arrow keys. They are large and shifted towards you. This makes it easier to avoid mispresses. Just compare these to the Blade's arrow keys. Yes, the Blade's keys look prettier as they're all neatly aligned, but they aren't as easy to use as the Predator's. The up and down keys on the Blade are tiny and the right arrow key is right up against the mic mute button. Arrow keys are the number one key that I mispress, so I really appreciate Ace's approach here, but I do have one nit. 
The Copilot key is massive on this keyboard, and I did mispress that one a bunch. And boy, when you mispress that one, it is very disruptive. This huge Copilot screen comes up, and there's no easy way in Aces software to disable that key or reassign it. Rounding out the keyboard, there is a multi-stage backlight and individually lit RGB keys. One thing that we did think was kind of cool is if you hit the performance mode button, the color of the keyboard flashes to match the mode. Green for eco mode, for example. The trackpad is about as good as you're going to get on a mechanical one. When I first used it, I thought it felt a bit cheap with a bit of a loud click. But the more I used it, the more I liked it. Its texture is absolutely perfect. It's not too slippery nor too firm. Tracking was delightful. In fact, in my mouse accuracy test, I scored one of my highest scores ever on it. Also, I really like that this trackpad just isn't monstrously huge like on other laptops. My palms, they didn't sit on the trackpad and therefore I didn't have palm rejection issues. The port selection on this laptop is pretty good, but their placement, it's atrocious. Let's start with the good. You get a fast 2.5 gig ethernet port, which is very rare on a laptop this size. Also on the left side is a USB-A port, a micro SD card reader, and a headphone mic combo jack. On the right side, you get two USB-A ports. On the back, you get the barrel pin charger. Please note, you do need to push hard to click the charging pin in. There is also an HDMI port on the back and two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. Both of these ports support charging, however, one goes directly to the integrated GPU. The other goes to the dedicated GPU, just like the HDMI port does. I really like this approach. On our Strix G16, all ports went to the dedicated GPU. With an external monitor plugged in, that laptop got very hot in light use, as there was no way to turn off the dedicated GPU. I like the option of being able to control how my laptop drives its external display. Plus, this is a warm feeling laptop. I want to do anything I can to reduce any extra warmth. Now, here's what I don't like about the ports. They are very far down the laptop so cables can get in your way. Secondly, some ports that you frequently need like USB-C are on the back and other ports that you don't need as much like ethernet are towards the front. And finally, why is there a micro SD card reader? Video and photo editors could genuinely be interested in buying this laptop. Most of them will definitely want a full sized SD card reader. The speakers are not a strong suit of this laptop. The sound that they produce is very thin and there is no bass at all. It's like the entire bass frequency has been completely removed. Even the treble and mid-range, they sound muddy. Also, the speakers are downward facing, so if you use this laptop on a blanket, the sound becomes even worse. Take a listen. Here's what the webcam looks and sounds like on the Predator Helios Neo 16S. I look pretty grainy, it is a 1080 webcam, but the colours do look quite good. And now I'm back using the room's normal lighting, and as you can see, I look a lot worse. Alright, it's about time that we delve into performance. The first thing we always do is take a look at the various performance modes, starting with Cinebench. We tested all four stock performance modes available in Asus Predator Sense. Unlike other laptops, there is no manual mode available here. Performance, it does get better in each mode. The Helios Neo 16S, it performs decently well in its quiet mode. It also keeps the CPU the coolest in that mode. But the keyboard, it does get a bit warm, which makes sense with lower fan speeds. When used on its highest mode, Turbo, the keyboard stays cooler and it performs better, but the fan noise gets really loud. Alright, I'm dying to tell you guys about my next finding. All modern gaming laptops now support USB-C charging, but they kind of don't. What I found in every gaming laptop that we've tested is when you plug into a USB-C charger, their CPU performance is throttled. I tested this laptop plugged into a 140 watt charger running the same Cinebench test that I just showed you. Now, the laptop refused to feed its CPU more than 46 watts. On average, a measly 40 watts. This is very low for an Arrow Lake HX processor. This resulted in a Cinebench score of 927, which is abysmal, especially when I wasn't using the dedicated GPU at all. It could have easily fed this processor 80 watts and still had plenty of juice for the rest of the laptop. In fact, in Ace's own software, it thinks it's running on battery when it's plugged into USB-C power. And by the way, just to confirm, it does indeed charge the laptop on USB-C power. It is definitely not running on battery. I wanted to highlight this issue to you today because it's really happening on every gaming laptop that we've tested. Manufacturers, they have to fix this. Let's now take a look at GPU performance in the different modes. We are seeing the best performance in turbo mode with a little less fan noise than we saw for CPU tasks. It's still very loud though. Performance mode is noticeably quieter. 
We only measured a 7% drop in time spy using that mode, so the trade-off of running in performance over turbo mode is probably worth it. In fact, now's a great time to talk about heat and fan noise. I personally use this laptop for a while now in a bunch of different use cases. Light use, like writing the script for this video, gaming, video editing, you guys get the point. This laptop, it always feels a bit warm, even in very light use. It's not as bad as the small Zephyrus G14, the Predator's palm rest. By comparison to that laptop, they don't get nearly as warm. It's mainly just its keyboard deck that feels warm. However, when compared to the larger Zephyrus G16 or the Blade 16, the Predator, it never feels as cool as those laptops, at least where your hands actually are. Now, I'm talking about both light and performance tasks here. Our graph shown on screen, it measures temperatures right across the entire keyboard deck. That's when the laptop is pushed during a performance load. Yes, the Predator, it looks a degree cooler, but as I said in real use, it doesn't actually feel that way. Also, if you normally use your mouse towards the back of the laptop, you're going to feel hot air blowing on your hand. There's an exhaust right there. When it comes to fan noise, the Predator is very quiet in light use, which I really like. However, if you're doing something that requires performance, it gets very loud. I found the fan noise when video editing on turbo or even performance mode quite distracting. I actually had to drop down to balance mode. Okay, so now let's double click in and see how the Predator actually performs for similar laptops. We're going to use each of the laptop's high stock performance modes here. Let's start with Geekbench. This tests a variety of common performance tasks. Here we see this Intel Arrow Lake HX processor in the Neo 16S do a little worse than the same processor in the larger Legion and Omen. However, this processor is still a high tier one for such a thin chassis, and it does do better than the mid-tier processors available in similar thin laptops like the Zephyrus G16 and Blade 16. Switching over to Cinebench, which tests the processor when it's maxed out, we see these differences even more clearly. This may be the worst performing laptop with a 275HX chip, that's in CPU tasks. But amongst its class of laptops, thin and lights, it's actually the best. Switching to graphics performance, in Times by the Neo 16S does well, beating out the Zephyrus G16 with its supposedly high wattage 5070Ti and worse Arrow Lake H CPU. The 16S even comes close to the 5080 version of that laptop, thanks to its high CPU score. In this test, it is not the best performing thin and light laptop though, that goes to the Blade 16, which offers a full wattage 5080. That makes up for the Blade's pathetic CPU score. By the way, I have reached out to Razer to see if we can get the 5070 Ti version of the Blade, but as yet they haven't responded. So now let's check out Wildlife Extreme. This is a Vulcan based benchmark, rather than the more common DirectX 12 of TimeSpy. We show this graph so that you can see how the 5070 Ti in the 16S compares to the MacBook Pro 16. The Neo 16S actually falls a bit behind here. Despite this, it does do a little better in our next benchmark, Port Royal. This one tests ray tracing. Here it once again beats out the slightly high wattage 5070 Ti in the Zephyrus G16. Lastly for synthetic benchmarks, we run Still Nomad. This is a 4K gaming benchmark. It's a similar story in terms of the laptop's rankings. The larger Omen Mac 16 with its 5090 is the only laptop to hit 60 FPS in this test. Now let's see how the Neo 16S would do in actual gaming. Be aware that the order of our graphs changes here. It first descends by GPU and then average FPS performance. Let's start with Monster Hunter Wilds. The Neo 16S gets just above 60 FPS in ultra settings at 2560 by 1600, which isn't too bad. We don't love its 1% lows though, being below 30 FPS, but you could just turn down the settings for better performance. The 16S is keeping up with a better 5080 GPU in the Zephyrus G16, which is nice to see, considering that is a much more expensive laptop. This is likely due to its better CPU performance and that it is also able to feed its hardware a little more wattage during this test. Next, we'll check out how these laptops perform in Forza Horizon 5 on extreme settings. Surprisingly, the Neo 16S falls just behind the smaller Zephyrus G14, even though it's drawing more wattage than that laptop. We retested Forza a few times, but the Predator continued to do poorly here. The Predator is still keeping up though with the 5080 Zephyrus G16, which is good. There continues to be a big gap though to larger laptops like the Strix G16 with the same 5070 Ti. Looking at Final Fantasy Dawn Trail, the Neo 16S does quite well, even beating out the Blade. This is a test where some modern 50 series laptops struggle to allocate enough wattage to their GPUs. The Blade 16, for instance, allocated 132 watts in Forza, but now only 106. The Predator 16S allocated 90 in Forza and 92 in Dawn Trail. Lastly, we'll see how the 16S does in Cyberpunk, both with DLSS frame generation on and off. We use resolution scaling in both of these tests. 
Starting with frame gen off, it once again comes out ahead of the 5080 Zephyrus G16, and its 1% lows are now better than the blades. It's not crazy good, but pretty comparable to all these laptops on this list, and very playable. Now, when we turn on frame generation, many of these laptops take a hit to their 1% lows, but the Neo 16S in particular is very bad here. The contrast between its high average FPS and then 1% lows, it'll make for a pretty stuttery gaming experience. It's got company here though in the 5080 Zephyrus G16 and the Blade, both of which see huge drops from average FPS to 1% lows. The final performance benchmarks that we are going to look at are for video editing. Let's start with Premiere Pro. Here we see the Neo 16S do very well, better than other thin and light laptops and close to the performance of the larger Strix G16. This is likely due to its powerful Intel HX CPU. Premiere Pro, it does tend to favour Intel because of their quick sync. Switching to DaVinci Resolve Studio, which finally works on the 50 series. Here we see a good score, but it falls behind the MacBook Pro 16 with the M4 Max chip. The larger, bulkier gaming laptops once again continue to dominate. Alright, battery life. I warned you, it's one of the weakest points of this laptop. When unplugged, CPU performance is dropped to around 70%, which is still a respectable score. But even so, it can't save this laptop. There are three major issues with this device when unplugged. Firstly, there is no way to reduce the laptop's refresh rate down from 240Hz to say 60. Secondly, there is no way to disable the DGPU completely like on some gaming laptops. Thirdly, this laptop has a much more power-hungry CPU than competitors. We were unable to get much more than three hours of battery life out of this laptop, even for very light use. I really hope Acer releases an update that at least enables the display to go down to 60Hz. Battery life, currently a big con of this laptop. Let's now talk upgradability, because that is a big pro of this laptop. Opening the laptop up, you see a very good sight. Two upgradable memory slots, two upgradable SSD slots, upgradable Wi-Fi, and replaceable battery. Now continuing with the good news, if you want to run Linux, we tested Fedora 42 and everything worked. Brightness up and down, speakers, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, camera, you guys get the picture. Alright, let's wrap. If you're looking for the best gaming laptop to buy right now that's under $2,000, this is it. Compared to the Zephyrus G16, the Predator is more powerful, has upgradable memory and offers far better value. However, it doesn't feel as well built, it does get warmer, and its battery life is much worse. I'll put a comment down below, by the way, if Acer fixes that 60Hz display issue. Compared with the Blade 16, the Blade of course feels more premium, has a much more satisfying keyboard to type on, and options for more powerful GPUs. It also looks nicer. I want to end with this. As I was reviewing the results of this video with Sierra, she said that the Predator is really in a league of its own in terms of value. I think that that's very well said. If you guys remember the old Aero 15 by Gigabyte, that was the best gamer slash creator portable laptop of its time. I feel that this laptop is a lot like that one. It's not the sexiest laptop out there, but it offers a tremendous amount of functionality and performance for its price. And of course, we do expect that this laptop will go on sale, making it an even better deal. So make sure to check out our website, bestlaptop.deals, particularly the price tracker. We also just launched custom price drop notifications, so go give that a go too. Acer laptops, they regularly go on sale for around $200 to $400 off, and if you end up buying this laptop for $1,500, that would be frigging insane. But I do want to end with the following. The Predator Helios Neo 16S is one of those rare laptops that is actually worth its MSRP. Alright, that's all from me. Good news guys, I found my watch. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and I will catch you later.